that life hits you out of nowhere and barely leaves you holding on. And when you're tired of fighting, chained by your control, this freedom and surrender, lay it down and let it go. So when you're on your knees, an answer seems so far away. You're not alone, stop holding on and just be. Falling into place He's on the throne Stop holding on And just be held Just be Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Bible is a book of covenants and God is relational and he wants to have relationship with us he's so serious about that relationship with you and me that he establishes it as a covenant meaning this is a solemn oath because God is very serious about relationship and he keeps this covenant for a thousand generations. Meaning, look, this is a covenant that he's going to keep it. He's going to stand by this through time. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy, it's our delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in God's word and in prayer with you. 
Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about this wonderful theme and this wonderful subject of covenant as we find in Scripture. Uh, we've done some preliminary uh, introduction study of this, uh, of this theme as we talked about the fact that uh, God is a God of covenant. Uh, we talked about the fact that covenant simply uh, is, is, is designed to simply establish a relationship with us, a relationship that will lead to fellowship with God. We talked about the various ways and uh, the, uh, aspects of the covenant, that, it, that there is a, a ratification or a commencement of the covenant. Uh, there is an establishing of the covenant with a seal or a token. Uh, and we talked about the terms, or the, the blessings, or the curses of the covenant, and so on. Uh, we also talked about five important covenants we see in Scripture and, and, and uh, just how God went about establishing those covenants uh, with various people or with the groups or communities that he was addressing. On the program today, we want to talk about another very important aspect of covenant, which is about God himself, the maker, the initiator, uh, and the keeper uh, of the covenant that he makes with his people. And uh, God is a God of covenant. He sets up these covenant relationships with his people. And then he goes about giving of himself in that covenant to his people. In Exodus, the sixth chapter, verses three to five, God says to Moses, I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty. But by my name, Lord, I was not known to them. I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, or whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant. So God is having this conversation with Moses, and he says, Moses, you know, when I revealed myself to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I revealed myself to them as God Almighty, or as the El Shaddai, the great Almighty God, and that's how they knew me, that's how they uh, got to know me. But I didn't reveal myself to them as Jehovah, the word Lord there is Jehovah or Yahweh. I didn't reveal myself to them as this Yahweh God, as this Jehovah God. Meaning God is saying, there's another aspect of myself that I really want you, Moses, and I really want my people at this time to understand about me. And that's Yahweh or Jehovah. And he says, that's who I am. That's the Lord that I am to you and to my people. And revealing himself as Jehovah, what God was saying is, I have established my covenant and I have remembered my covenant. So he's trying to help Moses. Moses, I am Yahweh. I am Jehovah, the God who establishes and the God who remembers his covenant. So the word Jehovah or Yahweh simply refers to God as the eternal God, the self-existent God. The immutable God, that means he is absolute, he is unchallengeable, and he's indisputable. Nobody can challenge. He's the immutable God, and he's also the unchangeable, the God who never changes, who was, who is, who always will be the same. And he's saying, I am Yahweh, the eternal, self-existent, immutable, and unchangeable God who keeps covenant. That's Yahweh. So in the, in the context of this eternal God, the God who is self-existent, the God who is immutable and unchangeable, also in that same name, Yahweh, is this, that this God is also the God who, who establishes and remembers covenant. So every time God says, I am Jehovah, or I am Yahweh, he's saying, I am this eternal God who sets up covenants and who remembers his covenant, who keeps his covenant with his people. And so this name came to really uh, mean to the people uh, as, uh, as, as that their God was a God of covenant. And what we see in the Old Testament is that God reveals various aspects of who he is 
along with this covenant title of Jehovah. So he says, I am the God of covenant and I am this. That means through my covenant, I'm going to give this aspect of myself to you. I'm going to make this aspect of who I am, of what I do, I'm going to make it available to you as part of my covenant with you. And so it is interesting to just look at the different Jehovah titles, if you will, if you like to call it that, which we see revealed in the Old Testament. And just look at each title, understand the nature of who, uh, that aspect of God's nature that is revealed through that title, but also understand it in the context of covenant, because each of these titles are prefixed or it comes along with Jehovah, the eternal, self-existent, immutable, unchangeable one who establishes and keeps covenant. That's Jehovah God, the covenant-keeping God, the eternal God who keeps covenant. And he says, I am a covenant God, and as, as part of that covenant, I'm giving this aspect of myself to you. So what I want to do on the program today is just remind us of these various Jehovah titles that we see in Scripture. Many of these will be familiar to you already. You've probably heard of them. You probably have sung songs with these, these Jehovah names or titles. But what I want you to do as we go through these Jehovah titles is to look at each one of them in the context of God being the covenant-keeping God. Because that's what Jehovah means. So we know about Jehovah Elohim, the eternal creator, the God of covenant. He's a creator God, but he's also the God of covenant. Jehovah Elohim, Adonai Jehovah, the sovereign God, who is God who keeps covenant, or he is master, Adonai, and Lord. He is covenant God. So he is the sovereign God who also keeps covenant. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, the Lord who sees. So his provision, therefore, is also expressed and is also released through his covenant. God says, I'm a covenant God, was also a provider for my people. Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, our banner, or the Lord who gives victory, the covenant-keeping God who gives victory for his people, which means victory, triumph, overcoming over your adversaries, over your enemies, is part of God's covenant with you and me. Because he says, I am Jehovah Nissi, or Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Or you may also have heard it as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Now, Jehovah, the covenant-keeping God, who is the God who heals his people, and therefore healing for us is part of God's covenant with us. God says, I will release my healing as part of my covenant with you. There is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Once again, peace. Shalom in the Old Testament, understanding means, uh, meant total well-being. Not just tranquility and calmness of mind, although that is part of it, but shalom means complete well-being. And God says, I am Jehovah Shalom. I'm giving you shalom as part of my covenant with you. As God who makes covenant and establishes covenant, I am providing shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. So he's saying, I am the Lord your shepherd, but I'm a covenant God. That means I am covenanting to be your shepherd. And you are my covenant people. And I am your shepherd, your covenant-keeping God, who also shepherds you, who watches over your life, who leads you, who guides you, who preserves you, who protects you, and who provides for you as your shepherd. He also said, I am, I am Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. So God is saying, I am a covenant God, and I am your righteousness. As part of my covenant with you, I clothe you with my righteousness. So uh, in our covenant relationship with God, that place that he's brought us to uh, build and develop this relationship, our righteousness is something God himself gives to us through the covenant that he has for us. 
Now, this is so much in contrast to what you know, the nations or the peoples of this world think, that they think we have to achieve or attain righteousness on our own. But Jehovah, Sidkenu, God says, I am your covenant-keeping God who gives you my righteousness as part of my covenant with you. So we just receive this gift or this blessing of righteousness. He then says, I am Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is always present, or the Lord is present there. So God gives us his wonderful presence as part of his covenant with us because he is Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who is with us as part of his covenant with us. He's a covenant-keeping God. And he says, I will always be there with you, for you. He is Jehovah Sabaoth the Lord of hosts, the Lord who is a a, a commander of his armies, the Lord who is king over all his heavenly hosts. And he's saying, look, as part of my covenant with you, I want you to know that I am the Lord of hosts. I have this great army, this powerful army of angels and heavenly hosts that are at his disposal, that are available for him. And God says, he is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the captain of the hosts, the king of the hosts. And as he is in covenant with us. He is Jehovah Mekedishkim, the Lord our sanctifier. As part of his covenant, he says, I sanctify you, which means I set you apart as holy for myself. God, when God sets us apart for him, he, sets, he wants all of us, every part of us, set apart unto him as part of his covenant. Jehovah Mekedishkim, the Lord our sanctifier. Then we see Jehovah Elyon, the Lord most high, that our covenant God is the most high God, the God above all other gods. We read read about Jehovah Hosino, the Lord our maker. Our covenant God is also our maker, and he will take care of us. He will preserve us. He will keep us. And then we see three variations of the Lord God. We see Jehovah Elohinu, the Lord our God, Jehovah Elohe, the Lord thy God, and Jehovah Elohe, the Lord my God. Now, why did we go through all of these Jehovah titles that we see in the Old Testament? Simply to bring to our understanding that all aspects of God, all the various facets of who God is. He's a sovereign God. He's a maker. He is the creator. He is shepherd. He is the peace giver and and so on and so forth. All the various aspects of God are part of his covenant with us. God is literally saying, in my covenant with you, I give all of myself to you. I make myself available to you. That means as covenant people, we have access to all who God is, all that he does, all that he provides, he makes that available to you and me. Now, this is so wonderful to know that as covenant people, God has made himself available to us as part of his covenant. Now, remember, God takes covenant very seriously. He says, my covenant, I will not break. I will not violate the word that has gone out of my lips. So when God makes a promise, he backs it up with all of who he is, with himself, and he makes himself available to you and me. God says, I am Jehovah, the eternal, self-existent, immutable, unchangeable God who establishes and remembers and keeps his covenant. That's our God. And the various aspects of his nature are made available to us through his covenant with us. Now, you and I, on the other side, of people who are in covenant with God, are in a position to receive everything he offers to us. All that he is, every aspect of his nature, he is making available to us through his covenant with us. APC's Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. 
We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep rooted in God's word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. You know, it's such a wonderful thing to know how a great, big, infinite God who, 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 who was creator of everything would say, I want to be in covenant with you. And I'm wondering if there's anyone who is watching the program today, or maybe you're sitting there with your family and friends watching this program, or maybe you're watching by yourself, but you have not entered into a covenant with God. You have personally not received this covenant relationship which God has made possible through His Son, Jesus Christ. When the Lord Jesus Christ died for us on the cross, He died to remove all sins away with His own blood, to wash us, cleanse us, and to bring us into this covenant relationship with God Almighty. And what we need to do is to believe, to believe in Jesus Christ, to believe in Him and receive Him, embrace Him, welcome Him to be the Lord and the Savior of our lives. When we do that, He brings us into a covenant relationship with God and He changes our lives. All that God is becomes available to us through that covenant relationship. Now, if there's anyone watching and you've never prayed a prayer and you've never made a commitment and asked Jesus to come into your life and and, and asked him to bring you into a relationship with Almighty God. And I want to help you do that before we close the program today. I'm going to say a simple prayer. And if you feel that desire in your heart, I want you to pray this prayer with me. There's nothing magical about the prayer. The prayer is only to help you. But it's your heart response that matters. That if in your heart you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in your heart you desire for him to forgive you, wash you from your sins, and bring you into a relationship with God, he will surely do that and he'll make you a brand new person on the inside. If you've never done this before, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. And right after that, I'm going to pray for God's healing power to come into your life. Some of you may be watching, may be sick, may be diseased, may be hurting, may be troubled in your body or in your circumstance. And I'm going to pray as a person in covenant with God. I'm going to pray for God's power to flow through into your life. And I want you to expect, I want you to believe that the moment I pray, that's the moment you will receive your miracle. So let's pray together. If you've never done this before, I want you to pray and receive the Lord Jesus into your life. Just pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. I believe you died for me on the cross, and you were buried, and that you rose up again the third day, and that you are alive today. Come into my life. Become the Lord and the Savior of my life. Bring me into a covenant relationship with the living God. And I give myself to you today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let me pray for those of you who are watching. You may need healing in your bodies. I want you to pray. I want you to believe this very moment that God is who He said He is. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord, our healer. And Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for anyone who's watching. I take authority over every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. I command it to leave. And I command healing to people watching. I command healing to the joints. I command healing to the bones. I command healing to every disease. And I command it to leave. Father, right now, let your healing power touch their bodies making them whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for watching the program today. And look, if this program has impacted your life in any way, we'd really appreciate if you take a moment and write to us. Send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's word to you through these telecasts on television. 
Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people in remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money, and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you. If you would like to partner with us, either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders, and also in church planting in areas across this land, feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India. We invite you to visit our church website apcwo.org where we have several free resources like mp3 sermons, sermon notes and publications that you can download and use. You can also call or email us to request a free copy of our publications. And please feel free to share your feedback and do share your prayer requests when you contact us.